Let me speak to you for just a moment, and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing tonight, because it's important. Uh, number one is this. How many of you stayed up late last night? Can I see your hands? Okay, I want you to hear what I'm about to say. I am not stupid. That's why I told Pastor Glenn this afternoon. I said, I am not preaching tonight because I know how that goes. We have a lot of people that stayed up late. Um, and if I, just, if I preach for 40 minutes, everybody will be asleep by the time I get to the end of it. And, and my ego can't handle that. I, I have never used this platform in 23 years. In fact, it'll be 23 years this weekend that life Community Church was founded, that Shelley and I came to LaPorte, and uh, we started Life Community Church 23 years ago, and we have never used this pulpit for political purposes, uh, and, and nor will we start this evening, okay? It, it's not going to happen. Every ha everybody has an opinion, everybody has an idea, and as Americans, we are certainly entitled to our opinions and ideas, but this is what I believe and know. Our job as a church is this, is that we are to reach and teach. Uh, we reach to our community, we begin to teach, and the Bible says that as we mature believers, they come to an understanding, Hebrew says, as if you're a mature believer, you come to an understanding that you can recognize good from evil. So our job is to mature you so you can recognize good for evil. I shouldn't have to tell you what good and evil is. Somebody say Amen. But I'm going to tell you tonight what my take is and what we're going to pray. Our, our country uh, is an un unfortunate place where there is a huge split. And I'm not going to make any bones about it. I believe at all, it's all the work of the enemy. I, I believe the racial division is the work of the enemy. I think that all the things that are happening, that we, we hold our opinions so high that we say foolish things. I mean, absolutely stupid things. I, I want us to rec recognize tonight that I, I love this country. I have traveled all over the world, and I will tell you firsthand, every country I've traveled to around the world, there aren't people trying to get in like they try to get in America. It just doesn't happen. In fact, most of the countries that I have visited, people are trying to get out of. And so, as difficult as a day this may be, there are people that would still love to be in the place that we're at today, and we are blessed. Yes. But I also believe this today. I don't understand how and why things happen other than I know in Romans chapter 13, it says everyone must submit to governing authorities. Look, listen to what it says. For all authority comes from God. And those positions of authority have been placed there by God. And so what I recognize is this, is that if I'm in the kingdom of God and I walk by faith, I understand that God puts people in places sometimes. I don't even know how he does it. I do know this tonight, though, that prayer works. Let me say this again. I do know tonight that prayer works. And we're in a time and a place of the one thing I hope that all of us can come in agreement about tonight is this, is that our country needs a move of God. Yeah. Can we come in agreement about that? Yeah. Our country needs a move of God. And this is what I believe may be happening, and I want you to hear me for a moment. It has nothing to do with what the political parties are, it has nothing to do with the candidates, but it has everything to do with this. That we are a country, and I want you to understand and hear what a pa pastor is about to say tonight. We are a country that is very deserving of the judgment of God. We, we have killed millions of innocent babies. Millions. Uh, for the sake of greed, we've done all kinds of stupid, foolish, evil things for the sake of money. We, we have allowed the evil of the internet not just to permeate our country, but we have propagated throughout the world and infected the world with the evils. 
Now, I didn't say all the internet was evil, but you understand a large part of it is used for evil purposes. But I believe this tonight, and I want you to hear me what I'm saying. I believe God has afforded us a window. I believe that we have been afforded a window that the gospel will be readily accepted and propagated throughout this country. And I believe that as a people, we have to be prepared to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think that we need to be a people that are aware of our search situation, and we're not, we're not taking political sides, but we're understanding that the gospel is the most important thing that we're propagating. God is not Republican, he's not Democrat, and he's not independent. He has a kingdom. And he has his own government in that kingdom. And so we have to be keenly aware of what he wants us to do in this time and place as peacemakers, as people who come and we have an answer. And it is Jesus. It doesn't mean everything changes immediately. It doesn't mean that this world is ever going to be utopia because it's not. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. He also told us, told us of a time and a place where he will return. And I think we, we have an incredible opportunity in a window. I don't know how long the window is. You understand something. I can't tell you how long the window is. I just know there's one there. When I was young, Shelly and I, we date way back. You, you understand? Um, we were talking today, and she said, I got my first job when I was 15, and... Uh, I knew where that first job was because I would go over there after school and uh, she, w she was at this person's house and she would clean and take care of the little boy and I'd go over there and help her. And then she got another job when she's 16. But when she was 15 and 16, she liked to play Miss Pac-Man. Anybody ever play Miss Pac-Man? <laughs> and in Miss Pac-Man, when you're playing... When you eat a certain piece of fruit, all of a sudden it gives you a window to be able to consume everything in its place. I believe we're in a spiritual window like that. I believe that we don't have long. But I believe that we have to be people who are discerning. People who understand. People can, that can see beyond our own opinions and ideas. Did you hear what I just said? People who are wise. People that aren't just saying foolish things for the sake of saying foolish things because we're speaking out of our soul and our flesh, our offense, all the things that bring greater division, that's not what we need in this country. We don't need people saying, well, that's just stupid, that's just foolish, that's outrageous. Because you understand people know what they know and they don't know anything any different than what they know. And for anybody in the kingdom of God to expect the world to act any differently than the world, then we're just completely stupid. And I'm calling ourselves stupid. Because you understand, the world is under the prince of power of the air. But we have a window. We have an opportunity to be able to pray. And I believe that God will hear us. And I believe that he can bring a great move upon people. Amen. And he can heal and mend what we can't heal and mend. He's able to do that. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to pray for just a little bit, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Shelley to come up in a moment and lead us in prayer as well. Um, and we're going to take a few moments tonight just to pray, and I'll tell you why it's important tonight. First and foremost, we need to give thanks. We're in a season of Thanksgiving, uh, and today you may not have gotten the results that you wanted for your, your particular candidate, but I'm going to tell you something. We still live in a blessed country. And we are still blessed. I travel in places and oftentimes the governments aren't as blessed as our government is. And there's not as much opportunity. That I, I travel to parts of Ac Africa now and there's extreme discrimination in parts of Africa now. I mean, it has turned 180 degrees discrimination. And it's difficult and hard in those places. And while we may complain, and while we might not understand and we might not think it's perfect, this country was never perfect to begin with. <laughs> it was never a perfect country. 
But you know what? God loves this country, and he wants to move here, and he wants to save people in this country. And it all begins with us tonight. It all begins with us having the right attitude. So let's pray. Father, we ask that you help us with our attitude. If there's great pride, Lord, convict us of our pride. We don't want to be a people, Lord, who speak before we think and we allow your spirit. Lord, your spirit says in Galatians that we are to walk and live according to your spirit and not according to our flesh. But all too often, Lord, we live in the flesh and we just seek your forgiveness. And Lord, that's not what we want to do tonight. Lord, we want your wisdom. And the book of James says that if we will ask you for wisdom and we will believe, you will give us great wisdom. And so, Lord, as a people, I want you to ask right now God for wisdom. Ask him tonight. Lord, we ask you for wisdom. Believing. We ask you for wisdom tonight. Believing. God, that you're bigger than our ideas, our opinions, our intellect. Lord, your word says that we can aspire to great intellect, and our intellect doesn't even scratch the surface of who you are. You are that magnificent. You are the creator, and we are the created, and you have blessed us overwhelmingly. In this year, 2016, where there has been so much, so much turmoil and division and hate and venom and all kinds of accusations and things brought forth. And so today, Father, we pray for our nation, the United States of America. We pray for all of our elected officials, Lord, that they may not know that they're, they're there by your providence and by your placing, but, Lord, they are. Your word says that you have placed them all there. It wasn't just by the will of the people that, God, you had something to do with it. And, Lord, that they would recognize you. And, Lord, we know that your word says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And, Lord, we are a country that needs to come back to fearing you. Lord, that we reverence you in all we do and all we say. And so we ask that these men and women might walk in reverence of you. That we ask this in this time and this window. Lord, reveal yourself in a mighty way. Even as you did in the times of Jesus, where you showed yourself to be real by signs and wonders and miracles. Father, that you come even today to show yourself by signs, wonders, and miracles. That there is no denial of your existence, of your power, of your glory, of your kingdom. So we're asking you tonight in this window that you provided, Lord, that you'll do that. Lord, we pray for those tonight that are overwhelmed by anxiety and fear and hate and fear for the future, Lord, and they're acting out of that fear tonight. Lord, we just ask that you calm their fears, that you come, Lord, and you bring peace. God, I have to stop right now and I have to pray. And I have to pray for forgiveness for all the parents of this generation, Lord, that maybe they didn't know any better and they allowed the television to parent their children. They were too busy with their own lives. And Lord, we can get so selfish and so consumed with our own stuff that we forsake a generation and they find themselves lost and alone. Lord, will you forgive our generation for our selfishness, for our greed? God, I pray tonight that you'll forgive us and that you'll have mercy upon us, that you'll have mercy upon this country, that you'll withhold your judgment that is so true and just that uh, there, there, is, there is no turning away from who you are because you are just. So, Lord, we pray for both candidates. We, we pray for our president-elect, Trump. And, Father, you, we, you know that oftentimes he speaks without thinking, and you know that. 
We ask that you help him and give him great wisdom. Father, we pray for the Clinton family. Lord, it's this time that you also teach that no matter how we feel about them, Lord, that you love them. And Lord, we're so quick to pass judgment on what people deserve. But Lord, I, I would never, I would never, ever want to judge someone to hell. So forgive us of our judgmental ways and ideas and attitudes because we're not you and I don't want to be you, Lord. That we submit ourselves to your kingdom and to your authority and your power, to your strength, to your might. Lord, I pray that you might mature us, that we might become a people who can recognize in these times and seasons good from evil. <laughs> that we can understand and we can avoid, that you can help us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, help us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, don't let us get fall into traps of debates and idealisms that lead us astray because all we want to do is follow you. And so, Lord, we pray for a move. We ask that you begin to shake the heavens Lord, as our, as our good friend and our, our spiritual father prophesied this year, that this year would be a yet year of spiritual shaking in the heavens and on earth. Lord, that you would begin this shaking. And as this shaking takes place in this country, of things that we can see and recognize that your hand is working, that, Lord, we want you to have your will and way. We don't want a political way. We want your way. We don't want a political agenda. We want your agenda. We don't want the movement of men. We want the movement of God in this country. So, Lord Jesus, we ask that you come. Start with us and help us to move upon our hearts to believe for our friends and neighbors and family. Give us a greater hunger and thirst for your word. Deliver us, I pray, because your word says, that for, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil, Lord, I pray tonight. All those that are bound and trapped by sin tonight, I ask, Lord, that you deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Pastor Shelley. You have no rival. You have no equal. And Lord, I ask that you forgive us for putting man or woman upon a pedestal. Lord, because there is none that compares to you. Lord, I ask that you would forgive us, that you would forgive the body of Christ for the division that has been among us. Lord, we want a move of God. We need a move of God. Lord, and if you have given us a window, it is time for the body of Christ to come into unity. And Lord, forgive us for putting man above you. Forgive us of our selfish ways. And Lord, we ask that you would come and you would move all across this land. Lord, your word says that we are to pray for believers everywhere, all over the world. Yes. And Lord, we know that today there are people that are giving their lives for you. And God, we are a nation that we are selfish, that we are greedy. 
that we've turned away from you. But God, I believe that you are turning our hearts back to you and we are turning our hearts back to you. And we just declare that we need you. Lord, come, heal our homes. Begin with us. Lord, examine our hearts. See if there's any wickedness, if there's anything in us that does not please you, God. We call upon your name. We call upon the Holy Spirit to come and to illuminate those places in our heart that do not please you. Lord, this nation needs a move. Our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, they long to see you. There is a generation that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. They hunger for something real. And we have it. Lord, we've hid our light underneath a bushel, and it's time for us to rise up and let our light shine. It is time for us to make your name famous. And Lord, just as Pastor said tonight, let it begin with us. Let it begin with life community. Let us change this nation. Let us change this community. Let our light shine. Let it begin at LaPorte High School. Let it begin at Deer Park High School. Let it begin in our schools. Lord, the division and, and all the things that we see around us, God, we ask that you come and you move because we need you. And we humble ourselves before you. Lord, let us be a people of prayer. Forgive us that we have been people that have complained. But Lord, let us be a people of prayer. God, I pray over each and every person here tonight. Lord, that you can calm fears, you can deliver us from habits. You can do what we can't do. And so I ask you to do it tonight. I ask it that you touch the infirm tonight in this place, that you heal them, that you make them well. I believe tonight we're supposed to have a time of commitment. You know, it's one thing to talk about prayer, but I think that we ought to commit ourselves as a people to prayer, that we ought to pray for the move of God in this country. And I believe that if we, we will set our hearts to it, that God will let us be a part of what he wants to do in this country. How many of you believe that tonight? So if, if you're a person that say, Pastor, I'll commit with you and I, I will pray daily for a move of God in this country. I just want you to stand right now. Just stand right now. Let's just commit ourselves right now to that. I, I need to be honest with you guys here tonight. I'm not a man absent of ideas and opinions. I've got plenty of ideas and opinions. And sometimes those ideas and opinions are wrong. How about that? They're wrong. And I'd be the first person to tell you that sometimes I'm wrong. 
And the only way that the Bible says that the first thing we have to do when we begin to pray for our country is to humble ourselves. And humility starts with the ability to be able to admit that you can be wrong. That's where it starts. It, you know, we always, we always quote that scripture, if my people will humble themselves and pray. And we don't really know what that means. I, I mean, we think, well, I'll just bow my head. That's humbling myself. No, humbling yourself is first begins with the admission that you're wrong. And we have to become a people that if we humble ourselves, then we can see the purpose and plan of God if we humble ourselves. And so as we commit ourselves tonight, I want us to humble ourselves. And I want, I want you to pray to God, not just me leading you. I want you to pray to God humbly before God that, you know, it's not about me. Come on, let's pray. It's not about me. It's not about my opinions, my ideas, my thoughts. <laughs> oh, Lord. I can so be caught up in the trap of that. From a young boy, Lord, I prayed for wisdom. I prayed and I ask you and you've given time after time. And Lord, we are a people who need wisdom. We need maturity to be able to discern right from wrong. We need to be able to see even our own homes. Lord, this is what we, I know I, I can speak for Shelley and myself and how we've been caught in deception, even our own home. God, we couldn't see. But Lord, we're asking that you would open our eyes. You would open our eyes tonight so that we can see. That we can be people of reconciliation. The Bible says that we're to be ministers of reconciliation. Lord, help us to become ministers of reconciliation. Peacemakers. And Lord, we're standing tonight because... We believe we need a move, your move, in this country, but that move begins in my home. Begins with my life and my wife and my kids, my failures. I don't know how you do things, Lord, or how you work sometimes because your ways are mysterious. They're beyond me to understand your ways. But I acknowledge your ways tonight. And I accept your ways. Purify us, cleanse us, Forgive us, lead us, show us. And God, send a move to this country. That as we have a window of opportunity that you have opened, Lord, it's much like the time of fertilization that comes. That it's a perfect timing in a window where everything comes together. Lord, you provide your part. Let us be fertile. Let us be able to receive what you're, you have for us to be able to produce much fruit for your kingdom. And I pray these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.